Hey, what's up everybody? Happy Friday. It is April 22nd. Welcome to Jaggy Sports. Last night was the collapse of the Minnesota Timberwolves. The Memphis Grizzlies went on a 21-0 run and um, Finch, the, the head coach of the Minnesota Timberwolves, did not call the timeout. Went 21 points without a single timeout call. And... You know, um, you could just tell that uh, not an experienced coach. Um, you know, it's uh, it's it was a damn shame that he didn't call it. Um, suffered one of the biggest uh, blow uh, bl comebacks in the playoff history, and basically, uh, how much is this to blame on? Carl Anthony Towns. I was watching the ESPN first take this morning and basically Kendrick Perkins called him a fluffy Pomeranian dog. Not a pit bull, but a fluffy Pomeranian dog. And, you know, um, he brought up a good point saying um, that's why Jimmy Butler left him. Uh, he didn't have that mentality. He didn't have that uh, you know, killer instinct kind of thing. And, <clears throat> you know, um, yeah, I get it. He doesn't have that, but you just got to utilize his skills in another way. And I think that because he didn't receive that many shot attempts, maybe um, that's not his fault. Like, uh, you know, I think, I think uh, they have to come up with a better strategy, the coach. And so my question to you guys is how much of this is on Carl Anthony Towns? And just watch this clip where he calls him an actual Pomeranian dog. Do you guys agree? Check this clip out. And handled all that smoke. The Grizzlies overcame a 26 point deficit to defeat the T Wolves in game three. Memphis won 104 95. They now lead the series two to one. Carl Anthony Towns had a lot to say after the game. Four shots for you. Just what did you see out there and why did it why was it so hard Next for you question. to get involved? Go home, drink some wine, move on to the next day. I mean that's really simple. You know, just uh decompress. Um, decompress. Just go home. Remember what what got me here, what got us here, you know, our support systems, our work and uh and each other. And we just gotta lean on that. We gotta lean on that. Mm, there's that. Big Perk, I was watching the post game and Charles Barkley was livid and just saying how it was dumb basketball, dumb basketball by uh, Minnesota there. How much of game three and this collapse is particularly on Carl Anthony Towns, though? Uh, <clears throat> it's, it's really not. I think, I think, you know, when we look at Carl Anthony Towns and we look at his stat line, he is a big man, right? He is a big man that you basically not saying he, that he can't push the ball or handle the ball and push it up the floor. But I just think Molly, Stephen mm -hmm. A., he's a guy that you actually got to get him the ball to his spots. And I think the pressure, the pressure that the Memphis Grizzlies put on the backcourt and the guards of the Minnesota Timberwolves stopped it. Now, make no mistake about it, Carl Anthony Towns is supposed to be that dude. Carl Anthony Towns is supposed to have this type of, uh, uh, you know, some type of uh, dog in him. Yeah. But we keep asking Carl Anthony Towns, to, when is he going to bring out or when is he going to come out and be that killer that we all want him to be? And it's just not him. And I think we give him unfair criticism trying to make him be someone that he's not. Again, like I said earlier in the show, this is not his team anymore. When I think about the Minnesota Timberwolves, I think about Anthony Edwards. When I think about the leader of the Minnesota Timberwolves, I think about Anthony Edwards. I know Anthony Edwards is going to go out there and compete. I know Anthony Edwards is going to come and address the media. And I know Anthony Edwards is not only going to hold himself accountable, but he's going to hold his teammates accountable, including Carl Anthony Towns. We disagree. Um, I think a lot of this is on Carl Anthony Towns. I'm not saying it all is. 
Um, you know, they got to play better. They got to play smarter. Coach, F Coach Finch got to coach them smarter because they did look idiotic in the second half. How do you let a team go on a 21 to nothing run in the playoffs and don't call one single timeout? How do you do that? That's just not intelligent. It's just that simple. And so, of course, it's not all on Carl Anthony Towns. But he is the face of the franchise for the moment. We look at Anthony Davis, he's coming. We see superstar potential written all over him. We understand it. But he isn't the one that's been there. Call Anthony Town, this is his seventh season. His seventh season. And the brother just finished averaging nearly 25 and 10. This is his second playoffs. If you remember in 2017, 2018, I believe, yeah, I believe that's what it was. Mm -hmm. Kendrick Perkins, they lost in five games to the Houston Rockets. The first two games of that series, you know how many points Carl Anthony Towns had? He had eight points and five points. Now, I understand Jimmy Butler was there and all of that other stuff. Andrew Wiggins as well at the time. Eight points and five points. It's unacceptable. He comes into the playoff game. He scores 11 points. He fouls out. You've listened to him be mic'd up. He talks a lot of smack now. He talks a lot of smack, and he tries to act like he's bringing a whole lot of smoke. Like I said, it ain't like he's some quiet, quiet boy, and we're bothering him or we're trying to impose our belief system on his shoulders. No, we get it from him. He's the one expressing and disseminating this message to all of us to, because of how he wants us to look at him. And then tip-off arrives, and we see something different. You got to play a game. Forget the 11 points. How do you foul out with seven minutes and change left, knowing how pivotal that was for you? Then you show up, and then in this Memphis series, in the last two games, the last two games, Carl Anthony Towns has attempted 11 shots. Attempted. Attempted. Last night, four. In two of the three games in the playoffs, or two of the four games of playing and then these three games, this man had more turnovers than shot attempts. And then when you're asked the question, next question, mm. what the hell's wrong with you? But, I mean, come on. But, but, that, that, that's but all see, I'm saying. Of course, he has a lot of culpability. I, that's all I'm saying. No. No, 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 no. And I'm not disagreeing with you. The reason that I'm so calm is because of the, the fact that you brought up about his first go around in the postseason. Carl Anthony Towns have shown us who he is. So I don't know when he have these moments, why does the world get so upset? Because you this would. is who he is. This is, I, 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 but but no, Stephen no. A., you were hold different. Him a, How many so, times do you go, you, you get on people, Kendrick Perkins, not just because of what they do, but about what they try to predict, project and whether or not it matches with yeah. what they're trying to project. Carl Anthony Towns is trying to come across as this dude. And then he gets on the court and shows up in post-game conferences, and he's not that dude in mm -hmm. either scenario. But, That's the issue. But 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 Stephen A., it's a difference though. If I would if I know if I would have known if I knew that Carl Anthony, Carl Anthony Towns was a Rockwaller then I would attack him differently. But I know he's nothing but a fluffy Pomeranian. And see, what you have to realize is <laughs> I'm going to pull a you. I'm going to pull a you on you. When I, Molly, when I first yeah, came into this I media dog, game, by the way, I, blew, I, 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 I blew Stephen A. up. I learned a lot from him. And he told me, every show is different. Every person that you go on the show with is different. So expect different personalities, and you have to learn how to adjust. Yes, did you did. not tell me that? Right? So I took I that, you. and that's the same way that I'm looking at Carl Anthony Towns at the moment. Do you, you don't think he makes me upset for a guy that's seven foot and not imposing his will and his skill as he is, the talent that he's had, that he has, but don't have that mindset to go out there and be a Joel and B type player, putting up big numbers because he has the capability. But at the end of the day, over the last seven years, Jimmy Butler warned us, this is who Carl Anthony Towns is. So when he do it, I'm like, hey, man, this is who he is. He's shown me this so many times. He has the ability. And we're not looking at him and saying, you should be dunking on people or you should be scoring 20 points a night in the post. What we're talking about is an overall level of production that mirrors what mm -hmm. you tell us you are. And what I'm saying is, if you're going to be all emboldened and boisterous about what you are, <laughs> all right, then I'm going <laughs> right. to be emboldened and boisterous about what you show us. 
whatever that may be. I agree. If if you mm -hmm. if you showing up and you backing up everything that you say, I'm cool with you. If you fail to back mm -hmm. it up, but it's because you struggled, yeah. I understand you struggled. But when you are having more turnovers than shot attempts, you are absent. You are MIA. You know, you know, you are completely missing in action. And then to show up at a Four press shots. conference. And then to show up at a press conference and to talk about next question. Let me say this to all of these athletes out there. You know, when you're a high-end producer, you get to do that. When you caught, when you come up smaller than mini me, you don't. Yeah. And you cannot show up <laughs> at a press conference talking about next question. Straight what up. How do you think you are? Yeah. Straight up. I, 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 let me, yeah. I thank God. I think there are moments in my career where I thank the good Lord I wasn't in attendance. Because yeah. let me tell you something right now. If I was in that room last night yeah. and, and Carl Anthony Townsend said next question, I'd have been like, what you mean next question? Yeah. Hold up. And I don't give a damn who asked the question. I'd be like, what you mean next question? Yeah. That's a legitimate question that reporter asked. Yeah. You have four shot attempts. Yeah, after a Pomeranian you, performance. You, you, yeah. Explain yeah. that. Yeah. Explain I, that. Molly, I mean, there's no Perk. way Mo he would have got away with that. Big Perk, talk I, to me. Molly, Stephen, yeah. you, know, you, you know the problem that you know that I the problem that I have with these athletes? Mm. They could approach some media person, media woman, or the man, a man that's answering a question, and they ready to get all bold and tough. Well, keep that same energy when you're on the floor. You see what I'm saying? Mm. That's the thing that bothers me because I know some of these guys, and they're not built like that. But yeah. they ready to attack and ready to go at the media. Oh yeah. yeah, go at go at somebody that's half your size. But we don't see that same energy when you're on the floor. That's the one thing I have with Carl Anthony Towns. No, that's for sure. Big Perk, I just want you to know one thing. I might look like a Bijan Frise, but I'm really a pit bull. Still to come, Villanova's Jay Wright <laughs> speaks of So pretty much um, there you have it, right? Like he calls him a fluffy Pomeranian, and he said basically he's not built like that. Yeah, I get it. We, he's not built like Joel Embiid. He's not built like like uh, Hakeem Olajuwon, like Shaq, he didn't have that killer instinct 100%. He doesn't have that same mentality, but he does have a skill. And the fact that um, he has that skill is just another weapon. So you just have to utilize it, right? So this is not on, all on him. Um, I get it. He's a franchise player. Um, he shouldn't have said next question. He shouldn't have talked about wine or anything like that in the post-game interview. But it is what it is. Uh, I just think that uh, the next game, game four in Minnesota, Finch has to come up with, with a better strategy because, you know, in the, I think they said um, in the last two games he had 11 shot attempts. That's just unheard of for a franchise player. You cannot have that low percentage of shots may are uh, attempted um and again that's not all all, all on him um as far as a fluffy <laughs> pomeranium dog i i'm not gonna go there um you know maybe uh other people think differently. Um, I'm not going to call a person fluffy Pomeranian dog. I thought I thought it was funny, but at the end of the day, it's kind of like um, he is a very skilled player. And, you know, again, Finch just has to come up with a better strategy. That's all. Do you guys agree? I'll ask you this question. How much of that loss... And game two loss is on Carl Anthony Towns. You know, um, 11 shot attempts. Uh, eight points, I think, or something like that last night. Uh, I can't remember how many the other night. I think it was eight again. Um, yeah, that's just, that's unheard of. So this is not all on him. If he doesn't get the ball, it's not his fault he doesn't get the ball. But then again... For a franchise player, you should be demanding the ball. So my question to you guys, again, is how much is this on Carl Anthony on Carl Anthony Towns? Is this his fault? And do you guys agree that with Kendrick Perkins, is he a pit bull or a Pomeranian fluffy dog?
This is Jag from Jaggy Sports.